True, Perfect, and Eternal Friendship from a Treatise on Spiritual Friendship by St. Alred Abbott. Jonathan, outstanding among all young men, took no heed of his royal lineage or his hope of the throne, but allied himself with David the servant and made him his equal in friendship before the Lord. The king had made David a fugitive, forced him to hide in the desert and condemned him to death. And yet Jonathan preferred David to himself exalting in him, humbling himself. You, he said, will be king, and I will follow after you. What a splendid picture of true friendship. What an astonishing situation. Here was the king, raging against his servant, and stirring up the whole country as if David were aiming at the crown. He accuses the priests of treason and puts them to death on a mere suspicion. He combs and searches woods and valleys, besieges the mountains and rocky crags with troops, and every man, man is sworn to wreak vengeance upon the source of the king's indignation. Only Jonathan, who alone should have had greater cause for envy, thought it right to resist his father. Putting himself at the service of his friend, he offered help and advice in his time of need. Jonathan set friendship above a kingdom. You are to be a king, he said, and I will be second to you. And still, the father tried to incite his son to envy David. He covered him with abuse and frightened him by threatening to deprive him of the kingdom and strip him of his rank. Even when the king pronounced a sentence of death upon David, Jonathan still did not desert his friend. Why should David die? How has he sinned? What has he done? When he risked his life and killed the Philistine, you rejoiced. Why then should he die? So maddened was the king at these words that he tried to pin Jonathan to the wall with his spear, heaping upon him further abuse and threats. Bastard son of a wayward woman, he screamed. I know well that to your undoing and that of your shameful mothers, you love him. With this he spewed forth the full measure of his venom over Jonathan and uttered the words that were his final attempt to arouse bitter envy and jealous ambition. As long as the son of Jesse lives, your kingdom shall never be established. Who would not be moved to envy by these words? Whose love? whose favor, whose abiding friendship would not be corrupted, weakened, and destroyed by such an utterance. But in his great love, this young man kept faith with his friend. He was steadfast in the face of threats, unmoved by insults. Forgetting renown, he thought only of service. He spurned a kingdom for the sake of friendship. You, he said, will be king, and I will be second to you. This is what truly perfect, stable, and lasting friendship is, a tie that envy cannot spoil, nor suspicion weaken, nor ambition destroy. A friendship so tempted, yielded not an inch, was buffeted but did not collapse. In the face of so many insults, it remained unshaken. Go, therefore, and do likewise.